This week, the 2025 proposed federal budget reveals that FHA is looking to potentially return to regional loan limits and also five other legislative requests. Building relationships is the way Mutual of Omaha has grown into one of the leading financial services companies in the world. Our reverse mortgage wholesale division is proud to carry on this 100 plus year tradition. To your borrowers, a reverse mortgage is more than a transaction. It's a promise of a better, more stress-free life. Our goal is to provide you, our valued client, with the best service and support possible so you can focus on helping your borrowers achieve the retirement of their dreams. Welcome back to the Industry Leader Update. Wow, what a segment we had last week with Lorraine Geraci and her Florida update. Now, all this leads me to announce that we have been adding chapter markers to most of our videos. And so that allows you while you're watching any given video to simply move your mouse on the play timeline or the scrubber bar as they call it. And what you'll see are different chapters or topics in any given video content. So be sure to use that tool if you're interested. But let's jump in today's topic. Will Heckam's return to regional loan limits? Now, that question arises from the Biden administration's 2025 federal budget and HUD's 2025 congressional justifications for their budget requests. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna walk you through the relevant proposed changes, and that has to be approved by Congress, and those include several notable legislative requests that are specific to the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage Program. First is the proposal to allow HUD to establish regional loan limits. And again, this is just a request. Now, the congressional justification of the budget states that currently home equity conversion mortgages or HECMs are subject to a national HECM limit of $1,149,825, regardless of the location. But if approved, the proposal would allow but not require HUD to establish regional loan limits that are aligned to the limits currently in place for single family forward mortgage program. So the traditional FHA loans. But the operative words are allow versus require, which means the agency could use their own discretion and judgment to determine which areas they feel should fall under a lower HECM limit. If Congress were to approve such a legislative request, you would see borrowers that have a higher valued home, a higher appraised value, that are located in the low cost area that would stand to be most impacted. Now, while HUD's motives are unclear, such limits, if enacted, would really reduce available HECM loan proceeds, and that would leave a much, much larger equity cushion for homes that far exceed the county or regional limit if that were to be approved by Congress. Now, for example, the single family, single unit loan limit for traditional or forward FHA loans in low cost areas is $498,257. And that's over $650,000 less than the current national HECM limit. Now those originating in counties that have a lower average income and lower home values would stand to be most impacted. But let's look closer at some real life examples. Using HUD's FHA mortgage limit lookup tool, we're gonna to find a list of FHA limits in Kansas City, Missouri. Now, as we can see, if we can scroll down this list, every county in Missouri falls under the low cost area limit of 498,000 plus for single units. If a regional limit were enacted, a 72 year old reverse mortgage applicant in Kansas City, Missouri, who had a home that was appraised at $750,000 and they were having an expected rate of seven and a quarter percent, they would see their gross principal limit reduced from approximately 271,000 under today's HECM limit regime down to 180,000. And that's a $91,000 reduction in loan proceeds or gross principal limit. So this is a big impact on higher valued properties, but let's try another state, one that has a concentration of higher valued homes, California. Now here you're gonna see both low cost and also high cost area limits for single unit properties, and that's by county or metropolitan statistical area or MSA. Remember, these are not conforming loan limits, but these are FHA limits that are used for traditional FHA loans. Now counties such as Los Angeles currently have the same limit that we do for the HECM, and that is because they have a concentration of high valued properties. But keep in mind, these loan limits are presently for FHA insured forward loans. 
Other regions, if we go to other parts of the state, such as Kern County, where you have the city of Bakersfield, they have homes that are typically worth far less than the homes that you have in San Francisco, Los Angeles, or San Jose. And Kern County's limit is 498,000 plus. So San Jose, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, they're all gonna be under the high cost limit. They would see no impact if regional limits were approved by Congress. Now, when considering these proposed changes, remember that similar requests to return to regional HECM limits that, and also proposals to even eliminate HECM to HECM refinances, if you remember that, among others, well, they've been put forth, but they haven't been even passed by Congress. They've been shelved. There are other notable proposed legislative changes in the 2025 budget, if approved by Congress, and those would include requiring HECM counseling for all refinance HECM transactions, regardless if they've received counseling in the last five years, which, by the way, is the current standard. Personally, I think that'd be a good idea, so they're just more aware of what's going on. Another proposal is to clarify the definition of a non-borrowing spouse as a non-borrowing spouse identified at the time of origination, but not to subsequent spouses. Also, a removal of the cap of the number of HECM loans that can be insured in any given year is being proposed. And lastly, since HUD has complied with the requirement that the HECM actuarial analysis we get each year examine the impact of HECM premiums and lower upfront premiums for refinances, and also the existing national HECM limit, what FHA is asking for is a conforming change to how they collect insurance premiums for HECM to HECM refinances. So we're unclear if that means that there wouldn't be a carryover credit from the previous HECM or even a reduction, we really don't know, but it sounds like they're requesting authority to have that flexibility to change the upfront mortgage insurance premium, again, if approved by Congress. So we're gonna keep you updated should we see any developments in these legislative requests from the agency that are specific to the HECM, and we'll do that here at HECMworld.com. Well, that's a wrap for us this week. Be sure to share this week's video if you would on LinkedIn. Leave your comment in the comment section below, and don't forget we have a YouTube channel where you can subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you always know when we have a new episode available. And each and every week we curate the most recent reverse mortgage and mortgage-related news for you. And you can find that in both an audio and video podcast. Audio listeners, you can listen and subscribe on Apple Music, Spotify, or Podbean. And, of course, we have our video companion, which you can find here at HackamWorld.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great week. And be sure to return next Monday for more reverse mortgage news, commentary, and analysis you'll only find here at Hackamworld.